Hello and welcome to the special edition of Cronkite News. I'm Sierra Delgado. Thanks for joining us. Covering education in our state is critically important to our news team. From school funding to special needs access, from scholarship resources to free programs for kids in need, here are some of our top stories from the education beat. Preliminary election results are in for Maricopa County and there is good news for school districts. For the first time in recent memory, voters approved all of the district bonds and budget overrides. Cronkite News reporter Erica Arrington joins us live with reaction. I spoke to Mayor Greg Stanton who said he expects to see bigger and greater things coming to our education system in the near future. Right now though, districts are talking about how they will spend these new funds. With the results of all 27 schools, budget bonds, and overrides approved, victories are being celebrated. Well, it's really exciting that, you know, for the first time ever, you know, if the votes continue the way that they are looking to continue, that we'll have all of them passing in Maricopa County. Erin Hart, CEO of Expect More Arizona, and her team work to make changes that will benefit education. School districts have plans for the funds. Those include teacher pay increases, adding art in kindergarten classes, and supplies such as textbooks and new computer labs. In the Phoenix Union High School District, communication director Craig Platenik says it's rewarding to see the increased investment in education. It really shows that, um, that our voters care about education. It's probably the number one uh, issue for them. Platenik is happy that alongside wealthier communities, urban central schools also got attention in this election. A lot of gratitude to uh, the constituents to know that they value education, particularly in the central city. Mayor Greg Stanton says Arizona love their teachers, students and staff and are willing to vote for those schools no matter what it takes. The voters seem to be putting more of an emphasis on education. Only about half the override proposals passed before 2015. In the broadcast center, Erica Arrington, Cronkite News. Meanwhile, five Arizona schools are among 342 getting recognition as some of the best in the country. Washington Bureau reporter Fraser Allen Best attended the National Blue Ribbon Ceremony put on by the U.S. Department of Education. Seats were filled with mostly principals, administrators, and teachers, but Jason Phillips, principal of Arizona College Prep, says the thanks at his Chandler School goes to an even wider group. Um, we have parents that greatly support our program and teachers who are extremely dedicated to what they do every day. And we have students who really want to uh, advance and uh, get the best out of their education. Education Secretary Betsy DeVos started the program with praise for the winners before the school's representatives filed across the stage. Arizona had five winning schools at the elementary, middle, and high school level. Jennifer Benjamin, the principal of Palm Valley Elementary School in Goodyear, says she gained a lot just being among other top educators. Just get ideas and experiences from other places around the nation. Phillips had a similar experience and said the lessons learned here will help in a state where schools can face funding challenges. You know, with the state finances, we have to do more. Um, with, I don't know how else to say it, sometimes less, um, but I think with the quality teachers we have and the parents and the students, we always rise above. In Washington, Fraser Allen Best, Cronkite News. In addition to Palm Valley and Arizona College Prep, other state Blue Ribbon schools were Acacia Elementary in Vail, Franklin at Brimhall Elementary in Mesa, and Seton Catholic Preparatory in Chandler. A courtroom as a classroom. Students at South Mountain High School are getting real-life experience in the courtroom process. Reporter Nicole Gutierrez is live outside the Sandra Day O'Connor School of Law to tell us how the program is preparing teenagers to eventually pass the bar. Four years of undergrad, then three years of law school is a huge commitment to anyone. But students at South Mountain High School are already practicing law in their own courtroom years before committing to a degree. It's how do we carry that into a case. Opening statements, directing and cross-examining witnesses to closing arguments. High school students at South Mountain High School learned the legal process by being in the process themselves. I always wanted to be a lawyer. I've always been interested in law and I wanted to see how it works. Students like Alanis Aguayo began the law program their freshman year to prepare for what may lie ahead. You learn a lot. You get to meet actual judges and they give you their opinion on how 
you've advanced and how you work in court. Students learn the basic law procedures to then running mock trial. They're learning how to, to write in a legal fashion, which is a, is a whole other level of, of writing um, and communicate in a legal fashion. And, and also, I think a little bit about how to be a professional how to be an attorney or a judge. And those already in the profession donate their time to the students for inspiration. I think it's really neat for our students to come in and get to work on a, you know, on a weekly basis on multiple times a semester to be able to work with real live attorneys and see that they're normal people, that they came from backgrounds similar to them. It takes me an hour to get to school every day, but I come just for this program. It gives a lot of our kids a reality of something that they can achieve. Smith also says the program has many student success stories. Many of the past students are now here at the Sandra Day O'Connor Law School. In downtown Phoenix, Nicole Gutierrez, Cronkite News. The Crane School District has partnered with Apple on a $20 million project grant to help enhance students' learning. Marcio Pong is in the broadcast center with more on how the school is implementing the grant iPad Air 2s for each of the students, Apple TVs for each classroom, and three years of Apple Care Plus for all of the devices are just some of the features nine schools in the Crane School District received through the Apple Connect Ed project. It's just easy because you get to learn it on the iPad. Ava Wagers is a third grader at HL Silvercrep Elementary School, and her tablet is her textbook. I like it. It's fun and you get to learn stuff. The Apple Connect Ed Project Grant is designed to provide schools with the best technology for students to help them learn individually. It's really about transforming education. When I grew up, there weren't devices, there weren't electronics, there wasn't even the World Wide Web. We didn't have the internet. And that's what these devices allow us to do. Apple's up. Teacher Brianna Spangler has been using iPads in the classroom for the past three years. She hopes that Apple will continue to uphold the grant. We're really trying to show Apple everything that we've been doing, what the students have been creating, how it's taking their learning further. So we're trying to demonstrate everything that we can in order to continue to have it because it's making such a difference in these kids' lives. Try to get the highest score you can on those threes. She says the project is already making a difference in the students' creativity level and the way they think. It was a resounding yes from the children that it made such a difference in how they learned but they gave great examples of what these devices were able to do to help them learn. So we know as educators that it's from the mouth of children. Not a lot of these kids know what a submarine is but with the iPads we can quickly look it up, research it, know what it does, know what it looks like. To help them All with right. their high-tech lesson plans, right. Apple also gave the teachers okay. MacBook Three, Air laptops. Two. And one. This is the third and final year of the project. Once the grant ends in May, the school district will be able to keep the devices, but will have to repair and replace the devices on their own. In the broadcast center, Marcia Opong, Cronkite News. Today on World Teacher Day, we're highlighting the unique style of One Valley teacher. Cronkite News reporter Monica Sampson takes us to Ingleside Middle School in Arcadia to meet a teacher with an unorthodox style. Here at Ingleside Middle School, eager 7th graders bustle into Dr. Border's first period social studies class. Pens and papers are out, ready to answer today's question. Does Abraham Lincoln deserve to be thought of as the great emancipator? Students rush to write their arguments because today's history lesson will not be a lecture. Dr. Border teaches solely through debate. I feel like most students are more apt to speak out and also formulate their own opinion because they get to talk. It's debate time and hands shoot up. Behind me are the textbooks of Dr. Border's classroom, but that doesn't mean they're being used. Dr. Border told me she's only ever used these textbooks once during the academic year. Why? She wants to focus more on discussions. I feel like he was a good one because he tried to help the slaves. Students like Easton Zapata, who says Dr. Border's style of teaching is his favorite. I like discussing things because it helps you learn different experiences from what people think and how people learn different and their different type of thoughts than yours. Today, Zapata and his teammates disagreed with one another. But after a debate, Zapata and his teammates usually high five all around. And for Dr. Border, that's what she loves seeing in her students. At the end of the day or at the end of the week, 
when you know that things have just gone right, you just know it was better. It was a good, it was, it was just good. And you feel good about what you've done. The Institute of Child Education's mission for the day is to ensure that the needs of future generations will continue to be met by teachers. And Dr. Border seems to meet that in her classroom. In Scottsdale, Monica Sampson, Cronkite News. Through World Teachers Day Awareness, the day's sponsor, UNESCO, says they hope to have 69 million teachers by 2030, to have someone in every primary and secondary classroom worldwide. A sensory learning technique is leading young people with Down syndrome toward a path of independence. Cronkite News reporter Sierra Delgado went to Gigi's Playhouse in Scottsdale to explore how students are educated using this unique system. Seven. Brett Schatzman counts on learning at Gigi's Playhouse, a center for people of all ages diagnosed with Down syndrome. Math is fun. I really know about math. Touch math is a sensory type of learning that helps students count numbers. They use touch points to help the students know what number is what and how to add them. Enrollment is free and students are paired with tutors who help them with their homework and study sessions no matter how they learn. Some people are more uh, visual learners and some are more auditory, like hearing. They can hear something and learn it. And some people are very tactile where it helps to touch and do things in order to learn. St. John says students of sensory learning can better grasp the abstract concept of numbers. Marlene Schatzman, Brett's mom, says that has opened up avenues of independence for her son now that he is out of high school. Well, he had somewhere to be every single day. And when that stops, you're kind of like, well, what's going to happen? He, he has a place to be, and it's, his life is fulfilled. It, you know, that's all we all want is just to have somewhere to be and to belong. According to the National Center of Health, Physical Activity and Disability, a 2015 survey says 57% of adults with Down syndrome were employed. More than 30% of those taking the survey said they were unemployed because of lack of job skill teaching programs and job coaching. How about cooking next door? Not yet, we'll wait for if we just got all done. Schatzman hopes sensory learning will help Brett find a job one day. In Phoenix, Sierra Delgado, Cronkite News. Hello from the children of planet Earth. Exploring, it's the lifeblood of the mission. Human beings are a curious bunch. What are we gonna see when we get really close? Just because an idea is crazy, it's not necessarily wrong. We were on our way. You don't get anywhere until you've tested the limits. That carries an intensity you can't imagine. You could hear people just, whoa. Oh my god, absolutely spectacular. It's a rush. We ask a lot of our heroes. We are at a remarkable moment. We're going farther than any exploration ever has. Today, Phoenix police officers participated in International Walk to School Day by escorting local kids to school. And Kirika O'Marinier shows us why this event is about more than transportation. I had so much fun at Walk to School Day last year that I decided to come back one more time. Are you ready to walk to school? Yeah! International Walk to School Day promotes ditching the car or bus and getting to school on foot. We want our kids to know that they have a safe alternative to get to school, and that's the walking to school. We teach them how to cross streets, how to look both ways. Phoenix police officers watched over the almost 2,000 walkers in attendance. The police are, are a very integral part of what we do. Uh, when we have crowd control issues, you know, they're certainly the ones that control the crowds. But they're not only there to control the crowds. The officers are in squad cars and on bikes as they interact with members of the community. A lot of kids are afraid of the police, and we like to get out there on foot, out of our cars, on bikes, participate in these events, show off our gear, show them that they don't have to be afraid of the police. Kevin Crespin, a third grader at Justin Swatani Elementary School, liked having the police there. I saw some guns and pepper spray and, and a taser, and it looks really cool. 
it's real difficult right now in these day and age to be a police officer because there's so much negativity. These kids love us. You watch, you bring out the bike, they want a sticker, they want to give you a high five or a fist bump. That's what we're looking for. Sergeant James Spross says the kids' enthusiasm towards the police can trickle down to the adults in their lives, even further repairing their relationship with the community. In Phoenix, in Kirk Marina, Cronkite News. Walk planner Don Cross says there'll be more events in the coming weeks. Sunt Construction and Central Arizona College are partnering up to train students to become the next construction professionals. Marcia Opong takes us to the campus. I've been wanting to do this since I've been in high school. Patrick Lopez, a second year student trainee at Central Arizona College, is paving his way on a career path. One of my first jobs, uh, I got introduced into welding and I just thought that'd be really cool to be able to do that all day. The Sunt and Central Arizona College partnership gives students hands-on training as well as pre-employment certificates and degrees for the workforce. They're going to have the ability to work directly with industry while they're going to school. We're closing that gap by bringing the industry into the college and having the industry lead the curriculum and, and tell us what, exactly what kind of training these guys need. The program offers students with a selection of construction jobs they want to learn. They're going to be learning industrial construction and concrete construction through that uh, construction program, and then there's the heavy equipment program and the welding programs. It has a positive impact on me because it's uh, setting us up for a career and um, just a good lifestyle. The partnership benefits Sunt as well. It's making the investment in students now so that it can hire them later. In Coolidge, Marcia Opong, Cronkite News. The program offers one-year certificates as well as a three-year academic apprenticeship program. The sixth annual Camino al Éxito Education Fair took place on Saturday. Reporter Bailey Moore takes us to the fair to see what the event did to help Latino families pursue higher education. Mostly we're here because we care about her education. From financial aid and scholarship workshops in both English and Spanish, to family fun and fair-like food, the Camino al Éxito Education Fair brought together several groups to inspire school-aged children to pursue higher education and help their families support their education path in a bilingual setting. Christy Silverstein, Vice President of Public Engagement for Expect More Arizona, told us, our mission is really just to ensure that every child receives an excellent education every step of the way. So that's why we do events like this, to try to make sure that those families get what they need to be successful. The Miranda family took advantage of all the event on Phoenix College's campus had to offer, and it inspired this advice. Just encourage all the parents to educate their kids and spend time with them and just yeah. teach them the right thing, the right thing to do. In Phoenix, Bailey Moore, Cronkite News. Phoenix Mayor Greg Stanton declared this week College Awareness and Readiness Week. Cronkite News reporter Stephen Sidner shows us how high school students are taking steps towards college success. This whole thing means success. Success that makes me a better person of who I am and who I want to become and helps me just guide other people the step towards success. Simone Rogers is a success story from the Be A Leader Foundation's annual resource fair which helps connect students with programs that can help them achieve their college dreams. Because I was like, how am I going to do this? Why am I going to do this? And what type of resources can help me out? She saw all the available options, and thanks to the fair and her parents, Rogers is a first-generation college student. She's now paying it forward by volunteering for the same group that helped her. Year Up prepares students for technical careers through a year-long program where they take classes for college credit and intern at large companies. Just because you had a break throughout college does not mean you will not have success. It just means that you will just have to fight more. The event is geared towards students like Rogers. I see a college education as a uh, um, as an economic mobility uh, uh, a tool. Zoe Lowe Felix was also a first-generation college student who was involved in a program that helped him get through college. Statistically, 60% uh, of jobs by the year of 2030, you're going to need a post-secondary education. Rogers and Felix want to tell others it is possible to get that degree. Keep an open mind. Understand that everything that you're going to go through, another person before you have done it, and just always ask for a helping hand. The Be A Leader Foundation hopes the event empowers students and their families to believe that they can go to college and earn a degree. In Phoenix, Stephen Sidner, Cronkite News. 
After the resource fair, students headed to the Phoenix Convention Center where they took part in a college fair featuring more than 200 universities. For students in One Valley School, breakfast really is the most important meal of the day. As Marcia Opong reports, starting the school day with a full stomach is making a difference in the classroom. Um, we get cereal, we get granola with yogurt, we get sausage with pancake. Christopher Gomez, a sixth grader at Jasinski Elementary School, says with all of the choices for free breakfast, he still has a favorite. My favorite type of breakfast would be the yogurt and granola. I just like it, just crunchy and reminds me of cereal. <laughs> The new breakfast in the classroom program is designed to ensure students start the school day with a nutritious meal. We run under what's called the community eligible provision, which allows all of our children to eat for free at all of our schools in the district. Um, so we receive reimbursements from the USDA for each meal that we serve each child. The school serves about 400 students each morning, which is twice as much of what they serve in any of their other campuses. Principal Dr. Donna Fitzgerald says this program has had a tremendous impact on the students. They're coming in calmer. They're coming in more ready to start their day. They have um, some time to just kind of adjust to the classroom. They have some time to socialize over a meal. They just seem to be more ready to engage in their in their education. Jasinski is the first school in the Buckeye District with the program, but there are plans to expand it. We are piloting a second school starting in January with the hopes of that going as going well. Dr. Fitzgerald says they want to continue the program as long as the funding is available. In Buckeye, Marcia Oponk, Cronkite News. According to the school, national studies have demonstrated that eating a nutritious breakfast lowers the rate of absences, school nurse visits, and more. Children who travel to Arizona from Central and South America by themselves are trying to heal from that traumatic event through art. Reporter Nicole Gutierrez sat down with the program coordinator and tells us how these art programs are helping children learn how to express their emotions in a positive way. Ten boys from Central and South America that were in unaccompanied minor shelters participated in the professional art series where they painted masterpieces that are now displayed in the Phoenix Art Museum. It was one thing working on their portrait in front of them, but it was something else walking into that room with all of the bright lights shining on their artwork. So they were very proud, you could, you could tell. The Phoenix Art Museum, a local artist, and the Free Arts Program for Abused Children of Arizona came together for this exhibit, El Alma de Mis Raices, The Soul of My Roots. It helped the children express their traumatic journey in a positive way. The boys went to the Phoenix Art Museum. That was their very first time at a, muse at a museum. They had never uh, been to a museum before, little less, uh, you know, found the, the, the thought of having an exhibit of their own at, at one of the most important museums here in the Valley. This is where we get to partner with not only one of the shelters, but also with a cultural partner. In this case, it was the Phoenix Art Museum, and then with a local uh, artist. And Emily Costello is the artist that participated in this series. A series of seven nights that Manessa says will last a lifetime for the children that participated in the program. This was something that they were, this was an experience that they were going to carry with them for the rest of their lives. Yes, they have their, their artwork, but what they learned and how they grew, how they felt that they grew throughout this series is something that they will be able to have forever. The 10 boys who participated in this series are children from local shelters that provide assistance for unaccompanied minors who have traveled to the U.S. unaccompanied and are currently detained and are awaiting the outcomes of their court case. In Phoenix, Nicole Gutierrez, Cronkite News. Their exhibit will be, on, will be displayed at the Phoenix Art Museum through November 15th. For 40 years, one teacher taught at Thunderbird High School. As Cronkite News reporter Monica Sampson shows us, after her passing, several generations of alumni are working to remember her legacy to the arts. There it is. This one is super great. Karen Duckworth Barnes, Thunderbird Theater student from class of 96, pours over photo albums, remembering Jane McSpadden, known fondly as Mac. I just think it's funny that, that my picture ends up next to her picture. Mac started teaching theater at Thunderbird in 1977 and didn't retire until 2003, but she stayed with the school's theater program until 2013 when she was diagnosed with an aggressive form of cancer and passed away soon after. And by the time I realized that, okay, I need to go see her, I need to say, goodbye it was too late 
and that has been really hard this whole time. It's been probably one of my greatest regrets is that I didn't get to tell her thank you and I didn't get to say goodbye. Duckworth Barnes knew if she felt this way, other students might too. This is her so she job. created the Mac she Memorial for one. alumni to share the hundreds of letters, shows, and memorabilia from their late teacher, all of which culminates with a school play. Four generations of students experienced Mac as their teacher. And in 1999, they performed the very same play that today's students will be performing in. When she passed away, I thought, you know, she really loved this play and she never got to see the adaptation that we're doing right now, but she would have loved it. And so I said, let's just do this in, in her memory. One major adaptation to the play, students will be acting alongside Thunderbird alumni from every generation. Students like junior Maddie Fowler. To see how two different generations of Thunderbird theater students have really like come together to form one show. Proceeds from the play will go toward a marquee project in Mac's honor. But for now, Thunderbird is celebrating Mac the only way they know how, through theater. That is Mac. The fact that people can say, Mac meant everything to me. She saved my life. She was the best part of my high school experience. I wouldn't be here today if she hadn't been my teacher. It's, I hear over and over again, dozens of times. That's why this project exists. In Phoenix, Monica Sampson, Cronkite News. If you want to see The Boys of Winter, it runs November 3rd and 4th at, Th at Thunderbird High School, and all proceeds go to benefit the Marquee Project. Thanks for joining us for the special edition of Cronkite News. For more multimedia coverage, go to cronkitenews.azpbs.org and click on the Education tab.